Welcome everybody to today's free Guru Mantra meditation. Thank you for joining me on Facebook and Instagram. Hi Emily, hey Chantal, brides, hey sis, hi Jordan, got Danny, Kerry, hello Valerie, be a rebel, you sound like a fun person to hang out with, welcome, Bruna, Chris, hey Mel, and Judy, it's so nice, I feel as though We've got a little gang happening. Hey Mel, I'm so glad that you got on this morning. Oh, Francesca. Yes, it is going to work. Bree, good morning. How is the gang feeling today? Happy to be together. Hi Nafisa. Happy full moon. Yes, tonight is the Libran full moon. And we're running a... Uh, a live stream full moon practice. So if you haven't ever done another wonderful morning with me, oh, thanks. Um, if you've never done a full moon with me, I started running full moon practices three years ago. It was actually the first, it was my first paid gig for the Light Collective. It was the first thing that I did. Feeling great. That's so good, Chantal. And, um, yeah, they became a really important part of the work that I was doing. Full body, low impact workout. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Um, and they really allowed me to start to connect with a different rhythm, not one which was based on my diary and constantly filling my diary with, oh, you know, appointments and schedules and everything being very linear. I, our whole business... <laughs> began to be run on the cycle of the full moon. Hi, Chris. Good morning. <clears throat> Which is so... <laughs> it was really difficult for the for all of us because all of the world... Oh, you set up a new beanbag? Yes. All of the world does not work on a rhythm of the full moon and there was no rhyme or there was no particular day that we ran them every month. They just happened when they happened it was really difficult to kind of schedule them <laughs> and it's funny because when you create your life around a rhythm that <clears throat> steps out of the mainstream it's a lot of work so um yeah but it was a beautiful thing and it allowed me to start to understand what's happening from a cosmic perspective uh vibrationally because you know as much as people sort of think that well, well, there is a certain group of people who feel like it's a bit woo-woo, the idea of the moon affecting you. I mean, my best friend is a, a nurse and she just said full moons. That's the time when everything gets crazy. She also said Friday 13th. Isn't that funny? So there is something energetically that's happening at these times. People's consciousness are affected. We know animals' consciousness are affected at these times. So it's a big energy today and the energy is liberal energy. So it's, you know, it's kind of airy and it has a lot to do with the heart. You might have a, a bit of an emotional response today. Good morning to you all. Hi, Claire. Hi, Mel. When I taught the kids were crazy on the full moon. Yeah, exactly. So when you were teaching, people, it is a thing, but we have become so disconnected from the cosmic rhythm and how it affects us. And we're so bombarded with electromagnetic frequency and, you know, visual stimulation. We don't have the sensitivity to realize what is affecting us. Hi, Claire. Hi, Sarah. Anyway, more on that later during the live full moon, it will be a practice. The sound is too low? Okay, is the sound too low? I wonder if, should I put a, I'll put a speaker on. Um, does anybody else think the sound's too low? Do I just shout? One moment, I'm gonna get my um, earphones. No, it's fine. Maybe Kathy. maybe Kathy, try turning it up. 
I haven't worn headphones yet for the phone. It seems to pick up the sound quickly. Okay, that's good. So, Kathy, just turn it up. Um, I do usually wear it for Facebook, but I forgot today. <laughs> okay, great. Sound is fine so far. So, I had a few questions that were sent through to me, um, which I wanted to move through. And some of them were quite, you have it on full, Kathy. Mm, everyone else is fine. So I'm not sure. You could try Facebook. <clears throat> Hi, Amy. Thanks, Jess. Hi, Nikki. Okay, so some of the questions were, first of all, around how do you say mantra? Um, <laughs> Sarah, focus. I'll tell you about the jumper afterwards. Uh, you can say mantra because that's how we would say it in Australia, but um, in Sanskrit you would say mantra. And the R is a little bit of a role, so mantra, mantra. The same as you'd say, not tantra, tantra. But, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, good morning on... Oh, the sound is perfect. Hi, David. Wow, so nice to see you. Good morning, everybody. John, Teresa, they all just came up. Oh, good. Thank you, Ellie. Great. Um, so it's just you, Kathy. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're the only one out of a hundred people. <laughs> um, so also, um, somebody wrote to me and said that they missed last week's chant. So there is a certain connection that can start to happen with specific mantra. And, um, you know, that's a beautiful thing. And look, I would say from like whether, and she was asking me, do I have favorite mantras? Um, and with, I mean, I have this real affection for all mantra. I really love the mantras and I understand that each of them are there to give me something in particular. So I tend to know that even if I am resisting a mantra, so it might be something that I'm not feeling on a particular day, I still know it's doing the work in me. So even if I resist it or I, 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 you know, you can, I mean, the words that we would use in our everyday life would be like, I don't like that one. And I like that one. And in yoga, we're trying to, um, step out of that duality of like or not like, <clears throat> um, so when I notice that there's one that I find resistance to, I also can welcome that in some way and notice it as a kind of from an observing perspective. Okay, this one I'm struggling a little bit with today. But what I would say is, because, you know, I mean, I'm going to continue to do these morning meditations for as long as I can because I'm really loving connecting with you all. Um, what I would say is, though, I would really like you all to feel empowered to be able to do these mantras in your everyday life without me. That is what this practice is about. You feeling empowered to be able to drop into your own practice. And these mantras have been gifted to humanity. They were once secret and they aren't secret anymore and they're for you and we should be using them. So if you did really like, for example, Ahambra Masmi, which is what we were chanting for the week last week, that can be your mantra for a while. You know, just stick with that mantra. Yeah, I mean, I have used them in bed to go to sleep as well. I have one, well, it's the one that we're doing this week, which helps to go to sleep with. Um, so feel free to stick to one mantra. And I'm giving you a series, but that's not necessarily how you would do this in a traditional sense. I'm not really, I love the traditional practices and I'm always giving the traditional practices, but I wouldn't say I'm necessarily a traditional teacher. Um, so what I would say is if you like one particular mantra, feel free to take that on. And even if I'm teaching a particular mantra, you could do the other one. It might be a bit confusing though, but also be open to all of it and notice the response even in resistance because sometimes what we resist is what we need as well.
Now the other question is that the more that you chant, the more you connect to it. Yeah, I think so. I think that they start to reveal themselves to you. I mean, that's with a lot of the practices. You sometimes receive the gifts of the practice. Okay, not the same without me. All right, thanks. I know there's something in the group energy, David, was saying that it's nice when you're getting taught by somebody. Um, it is. It is really nice to be taught by somebody. And <clears throat> I have to say that what happens when you're being taught by a teacher who is able to drop deep into their own practice? So this goes out to all teachers who teach meditation, who teach yoga. If you have your own self-practice that drops deep, then your students will drop with you or elevate with you. I mean, whichever way you want to go on the scale of high and low. As a teacher, it's, a, it's your responsibility to really go into your own practice. Because if you don't, if you kind of stay at this base level, if you don't have a self-practice, if you don't know what it is that you're teaching, your students will never be able to drop into a depth or to expand greatly. So wherever you're at in your practice is where your students will be able to move to as well. So I have a daily practice. I meditate for half an hour in the morning. I often meditate in the evenings as well. And that means that, you know, I'm able to hold a big space and kind of draw you guys in with me as much as possible. There is also responsibility on your end, of course. Um, but that is another reason why it is really nice to work with a teacher. And I think about that with my teachers. They were so dedicated to their practice that it allowed me to really go deep into it and drop in another level as well. So it is nice to be guided, but it is really important that you learn to do it on your own and um, to cultivate that energy within you. Because one day you might be the people who are sharing this practice with others. Hopefully you will be. Um, the other question was around my practice. So I have been gifted a personal mantra. So in the tradition, very often the teacher will gift one mantra, which is your mantra. And um, I, I'm initiated into giving personal mantra and maybe, you know, at the end of, well, I mean, who knows, maybe in a, like the coming months, if people are wanting their own mantras, that's something that we could find a way to do together um, in there are different kind of trademarked um, meditation styles like transcendental meditation and Vedic meditation and they will also use um, a particular private mantra that's gifted by the Guru. Um, so you, if you wanted that, you could also see a, a Vedic meditation teacher or a TM teacher. I think even on TM you can type in your birth date online and pay $1,000 and they send it to you. Mine won't be so expensive. <laughs> um, so that's something that I'm happy to do for, you know, people individually. I so I work with my own personal mantra. Um, the difference with a personal mantra is that there isn't an inherent meaning necessarily behind it. However, all of the mantras do hold that vibrational um, meaning of the sound itself. So um, there, there is an inherent meaning, but it isn't one that you necessarily can read up about. So it's something that the teacher basically understands and channels after practicing and, and knowing the different bija mantras or seed sounds. They can gift it to you. So you won't know what the mantra means necessarily. You might find out. Some of them also correlate with the ones that I'm giving you. But they could just be sounds. And in this way, the consciousness doesn't attach to meaning, which can also be very powerful as well. Um, so I don't change my, I'm just looking at the question. I don't change my mantra the way we have been. I stay with the same one. However, Often in the evenings, for example, I'll use a different mantra. I'm not particularly stuck on 
on mantra meditation as in um, not stuck that's a negative word um, I am not attached to only doing mantra meditation I feel its power it has changed the way I meditate I mean I started meditating at 16 and I'm now 36 so I have been meditating consistently for a really long time however mantra meditation opened up a whole understanding of my consciousness so I really appreciate its power but I don't feel like I have to um, only do that one so there are, I'll, I'll do other meditations in the evening as well or I'll work with other mantras but I tend to stick to one mantra in the morning and I think that although this particular it, this particular mantra has a specific flavor for me and it isn't necessarily the kind of lights and fireworks that I'll experience with other meditations but there is a consistency to it and the mantra slowly reveals itself over time and one of the one of the other questions was around time when I spoke about consecration being something that revealed itself to me after about two years I would say that where we often expect uh, big results uh, in a short period of time and yeah, that's right. It's great to have a variety. Um, and I love variety, but when uh, we are able to be consistent for a period of time, sometimes if those big results don't happen at the start, there's almost like this slow build into a conscious awareness of what that mantra or what that practice is giving to us that we might not be able to perceive at first or perhaps the energy needs to build in order for us to actually have a profound experience. And in, I mean, from the journey of a yogi, you'll know that sometimes at the very start of your life as a practitioner, you'll have these amazing insights. Everything starts to open up for you. You kind of proselytizing to everyone about how they have to do yoga and all of these everything's kind of happened and then you kind of can reach a bit of a, a steady period it's almost as though your energy has lifted very quickly and then you've stayed at that one point you think nothing's happening necessarily however you're still elevated you know you're still at a higher state of consciousness than what you were before you started and sometimes we have these moments where we have to be consistent. We have to ride out what might be perceived as boring or there's not a lot of variety or I haven't received the downloads or the insight or what it is that I'm doing this practice for. You can almost have a lull in the way you um, receive. But that is just as an important part of the journey to be able to stick with it. So once you stick with it, it's then you again have have more experiences and these are yeah we expect big results in a short period of time that goes for again it's the culture that we live in this is the capitalist way of living you know everyone needs to succeed in 20 seconds and if you don't have a million followers or if you're not making this amount of money really quickly give up on it but like, yep, Sarah, you said consistency, determination and devotion to the practice and to yourself is really key. Um, and discipline is self-care. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's right. Even when you feel like I'm not getting anything from this, you are. Try not doing the meditation <laughs> for a couple of days and see how your relationships start to be affected. It can be quite instant. You think that nothing's going on, but in fact, you're maintaining an elevated vibration. Um, now, I'm, I'm I've been talking for pretty much 20 minutes on these questions. I haven't really had a time to get into consecration, which we spoke about yesterday. Um, but what I will briefly talk about when it comes to consecration, <laughs> yeah, you felt lethargic. I'm sorry you felt low, but this is a good, it's a good lesson to realize that you don't want to give up on the practice, even when you feel lazy. Very potent, but subtle. Mm -hmm. That devotional state just starts to build. Thanks, Prezi. <clears throat> um, so with consecration and one of the very honest 
comments was how we were talking about when we give, are we giving just to give in life or are we giving to get something back and how when you are honest about it, very often when we give we're waiting for some kind of response and that's human. It is, you know, I'm not saying that we have to kind of release from that very quickly, but consecration and the practice and the art of karma yoga, which is action without any expectation, is so liberating. I mean, karma yoga, if I had to just choose one way, it would probably be to live on an ashram and live as a karma yogi because it is the most powerful practice for me being somebody who's such a hard worker and I think that growing up I often you know when I was working hard it would be to receive something back like a grade from a teacher or um, encouragement from my parents or having that uh, that constant response back and to actually do work and and just do work for work's sake allows so much presence and allows you to step out of any need for affirmation or validation. It's real freedom. Okay, so I'm going to talk more about consecration, but thank you for those. There was another there was another question, but maybe I'll get on to the, there was a question about um, feeling good in this time and being okay with feeling good in this time. I will hopefully get onto that tomorrow. So um, let's begin the meditation. Otherwise, this will turn into a half hour teaching and a 10 minute meditation. So let's begin. If you're lying down, find some comfort. If you're in a seat, please lengthen through the spine. <clears throat> Soften the shoulders and the eyes. And take a deep breath in the nose. Exhale out of the mouth. And again in the nose. Exhale out of the mouth. One more round like this in the nose. And exhale, release. One round of arm. to a positive state of mind, consciously letting go of all that is everyday and mundane, all that is temporary, the secondary thoughts and ways of being, we let them go and we align our consciousness with all that is sublime, divine, universal, eternal, an elevated state of consciousness. This positive state, we now consecrate from this state. If you like, you might take the palms to face up and silently offer up all of the karmic fruits, anything you might receive from this practice, offer it up to a greater power, divine consciousness. Step out of the need to receive, allow yourself to be free in this practice. No expectation. And when you offer it up, Wait for a response. You'll feel it from above. And 
And when you're ready, rest the hands. And we begin with Guru Mantra meditation. The mantra is Om Namah Shivaya. You might like to repeat it after me. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Now all together. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. A little quieter. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Until it becomes a whisper. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. And allow that whisper to become silent repetition as though the mantra were now being absorbed internally, repeating almost of its own accord, vibrating Om Namah Shivaya through your whole body. Realigning shifting healing all parts of you. Om Nama Shivaya. If the mind becomes distracted, bring it back to the mantra. Om Namah Shivaya. Vibrating. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Really focus on the feeling of this mantra for the final few breaths. Now 
And then please let go of the mantra completely. <clears throat> and see if you can keep your focus without an anchor. No mantra, just a focused mind. Focused on what? Stillness and emptiness or fullness. And bring the hands to touch. Rub the palms quickly. And I'd like you to bring your hands onto any part of your body that needs some healing. And I'll sing the Medicine Buddha Mantra for healing and transformation, not just physically, but also from a spiritual perspective. <clears throat> Te Berkanze Berkanze Maha Berkanze Berkanze Raja Samud Gati Soha Te Berkanze Berkanze Maha Berkanze Berkanze Raja Samud Gati Soha Te Ataum Berkanze Berkanze Maha Berkanze Berkanze Raja Samud Gati Soha Hands to pray, one round of Om. Oh. We draw our thumbs to the third eye, gently bow forward. To this journey we have all been brought on together. That we don't necessarily understand that we can feel into the effects of the mantra, the meditation, to that capacity for us to feel and know and understand from a soul's perspective, that we feel and sense all those who've joined us have also connected to, to that experience in ourselves and those who join us, we bow and say Namaste. Namaste, everybody. Thank you all for joining me. This one went a bit longer with the questions, but I do love the questions. It's so nice to receive them because I feel as though, you know, people are really connecting with these teachings. And there was a message from an ashram who joined us and they said, yay for ashrams. <laughs> yes. And I will see a lot of you for the full moon tonight for those who are joining. Well, I'm not sure how many of you are joining me, to be honest, because it's hard to track. But um, for those of you who are coming, We'll be having a night of movement and pranayama and deep meditation as well. Everybody have the most beautiful day and any questions, please send them through. Thank you all for joining me and being on this wild journey into the depths of our consciousness with me. It is such a joy. I feel so happy to have this practice with you all and to connect with you. Oh, thanks, Amanda. I'll talk about singing and mantra and consecration maybe tomorrow. Really looking forward to seeing those of you tonight. Oh, yeah.
Oh gosh, good luck, Mel. Take this mantra with you. I might. I need to record it and put it up online. It's a very beautiful healing mantra. The Medicine Buddha Mantra. You can look up Medicine Buddha Mantra. Even on Spotify, there will be lots of different um, variations of it that I've listened to as well. And there's often like this big Tibetan voice doing it, which is really nice. You're a joy, Sarah. Love to you, Claire. Thank you all again. Uh, good luck today with whatever it is you face. Drop into the mantra whenever you need and that stillness. Ah, welcome. Thank you. Thank you all. And I will hopefully see most of you again tomorrow. Bye.